Hello everyone and welcome back to my shop. Today I'm going to show you how I draw a center finder in Design Spark Mechanical. Uh, these I cut on my CNC. This is uh, some half inch high density polyethylene or HD, HDPE and uh, they're pretty easy to make and I'm going to show you how to draw how I draw these today in Design Spark. Um, Let's go ahead and get started over here. I've got my design spark open. And before I get started, let me swing my little keyboard over here so y'all can see what uh, what keys I'm hitting as I go through this. And I'll just start out and hit File, New, Design. So I'll just come up here and hit the plan view to get a straight on look at it. And I'm going to start out with uh, just drawing a, a simple line here. I'm going to hit the line and I'm going to hit the origin and click and then bring this out. Oh, I don't know, about five inches or so. Uh, then I hit select in that. Hit Z to get it back over here. Okay, so we're going to take the line. Um, icon here or you can tap the letter L and I'm going to come up here at the origin and I'm going to click and then I want to keep this at a 45 degree angle so I'm going to if I can get this right there hold that at 45 then I'm going to tap the space bar and type in two inches okay and now I want to come off from that 135 degrees as you can see straight out and I want to tap that the space bar again and I'm going to make that 1.25 all right now we'll click select to uh, stop that now we'll hit the line command again with the letter J come back to the origin get there again I want to get a 45 degree right there so now that I've got 45 I'll tap the space bar and we'll click two inches again. Put that one there. And again, we'll come down here straight off of this one at 135 degrees. We'll tap the space bar again and make this two inches. Okay. Now we want to come up in this direction. Uh, again, we want to have 145 degrees, so we want to make sure it's staying right there. But we want to click on that line right there. So that should give us two inches there. We're right on that center line. And then we'll come back, hit the line command again. Come back here to the end of this top line here. Click on that to get it started. We want to come back until we hit 45 degrees. Or another thing we can do is we can highlight this one. And as we get 45, you see that that one will highlight and be green. So we're going to get this at 45 and we want to be touching that center line. And we're going to just click right there. Okay, now we can click select to end that. And basically that's the main shape of our center finder. But now I want to come right here and click the circle or letter C. And I wanna come right here to where this point is and hit the spacebar key and make a 3 sixteenths circle right there. And then I'm also going to put another one and we'll move it over just an eighth inch. And notice when I get it, when the other circle turns red, that means that I've got it the same size. So we'll let go there. Now we've got two 188 circles. Now we're going to hit the line key or the line icon and go from there to there. And then we'll also come from here to here. And then I'm going to hit the trim away or the letter T. And I can highlight in here and get rid of these and turn this into a 
little oval here. And that's just to give some relief for when you we make the um, the corner piece there. Okay, now I'm going to come down here to this point on this oval or the intersection of those two lines and click on and bring another line, keeping it 135 degrees. And I want it to come right to that bottom line right there. Okay, so that is basically going to be our uh, center point. So now we can turn this into a 3D mode right here. And we want to hit this and this. And we can hit the home key here and we'll hit pull or the letter P. And we're going to pull this up and we're going to make this We'll hit the uh, space bar as we're pulling this up and make this half inch. And then we're going to come down here and hit this surface. And we're going to pull this up and we'll hit space bar again so that we can enter a quarter inch. And that makes our um, thickness for our center finder. All right, now I'm going to highlight this surface and hit plan view just to get it straight on again and I'll tap Z to uh, to get it and I'm going to hold down the shift key and the middle mouse button so that I can pan this over a little bit to get it away from that little keyboard thing in the corner and now what I want to do is I, I'm not going to need these anymore in here so I'm going to just highlight those and hit the delete key And that will get rid of those. And now, just for the heck of it, I also like to put another hole. So I'm going to hit a circle. Uh, we're going to hit this surface and then hit the sketch mode. And we'll come back and hit the circle or the you can hit uh, C. And I'm just going to come right about here. It's not critical. And I'm just going to draw another 188 hole. And then I will hit 3D mode and we'll click this to uh, spin around, click the home, hit pull, come in here and just pull this out to make it create a hole. And all that is for is to give, it, give yourself a place to hang that on like a pegboard in your shop or wherever you're going to put it. So, all right, so there we've got our center finder. I can delete this center line key, and that's uh, that's going to be what, what it looks like right there. Now, I usually cut these on my CNC router, but you could 3D print one of these. If you want to 3D print one of these, you would come to the export options and save this as a 3D print, which will make it uh, STL file. Uh, or if you're going to use this to cut it on your router, say you're going to bring it into VCAR Pro or similar uh, cam software, you would want to save this as a 2D AutoCAD DXF and you would be able to import in that into like VCAR Pro or something. One thing to be sure of uh, is you want to, and I'm going to do it here, but let's first save this before we get, uh, you notice I've created a, a folder here called center finder tool. So I'm just going to call this center finder. And if we want to save this as a DXF, we want to make sure that you're looking at the view that you want to see when you import it into VCAR Pro or whatever you're using, Fusion 360, what, what have you. But uh, if you save it, with it like this, this is the 2D AutoCAD view or DXF view you're going to get. So you want to make sure you highlight this, hit the plan view, because this is what you're going to want to see when you save it. And I can show you how that works here. I'm going to save this as a 2D AutoCAD DXF, and it's going to come up. It's in that same directory, so I'll be able to find it here in just a minute. So let's click Save. And we've now got a DXF file that we can bring in. And just for the heck of it, I'll go ahead and save this as well as a 
3D print STL file as well, just in case we want to try to run one of these on a 3D printer. So I'll save those. Okay, now you might say, hey Dave, this is pretty cool, but it's really pretty small. I'd really like to have one a little bigger because maybe you're a wood turner and you turn larger diameter logs uh, on your lathe or something. So let's see if we can scale this up and make one that's a, a little bit bigger. So we'll come over here and let me, again, I'm going to hold the shift key in the middle mouse button. We're going to kind of pull this over this way. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of this one. Now you'll notice if I hold the Click over here where the solid is that highlights this whole thing. Or another way I can do it is to uh, just highlight the part and triple click real fast three times with the left mouse button. And there you can see it highlights it up there. And now that we've got it all highlighted, the, the whole part, I'm going to hit Control C and then Control V. And when I do that, you see it puts another one up here. So I'm going to uncheck this first one. And now we just have this one here. So I'll highlight it so that it selects the whole object. And then I'm going to click move and I'm going to grab this arrow here. And we're going to move this one over here to the right a little bit and hit select. And now when I turn this one back on, you can see that I have two of them now. And what we're going to do is we're going to scale this one down. Uh, since it's highlighted, we're going to hit the pull command. And then we're also going to come right here into the pull options and hit scale. We're going to select a point to scale it from. And I'm just going to select this point right here. And then here you can see we have a pull arrow right here. So I'm going to start pulling this out. And as I pull it out, I'm going to tap the space bar and then i'm going to hit two okay so now you can see that one's quite a bit larger than the other one now if we go back and hit the this little icon that looks like the calipers here we're going to measure and we know that this line was two inches when we drew it this line was two inches when we do it drew it another thing we want to check is we want to make sure that this angle is correct that we didn't mess up and get the wrong angle in there so we'll go from this one and i'll hold the control key down come down and highlight this one it's showing that that's 90 degrees and it's perpendicular and now i want to make sure that it's 45 degrees again holding the control key down between these two and then of course it would be 45 between those two as well. So that is correct. So now I'm going to scroll this one over here a little bit. Uh, let me hold the shift key down and the middle mouse button and kind of pan this over. Okay. Now this one, I said to make it two times the scale. So if we hit the calipers and then go click that line, it was two. We should now see that it's four inches. This one is four inches. And again, these will are, are the angles are going to be the same. We'll hold control key down. You can see that it's 45 inches there, or I'm sorry, 45 degrees. And then it's 90 degrees there. So we now have one that's, uh, this one I think is, let's just see what that is. We'll click this point here, hold down control and click that point. So that one's a little less, uh, 4.8, a little less than five inches. So this one here is going to be roughly, hold control. Yep, a little less than 10 inches. So this one would probably be a little suitable. And of course you could scale these up even bigger if you wanted. Now, one thing about scaling I want to mention, I told you that this hole, that uh, this little 3 16 hole, that's just something I put in them for if you want to hang it on a nail or hang it on a, a pegboard or whatever, um, that makes it handy. So the, the size of that hole really makes no difference. Just like the size of this oval doesn't make any difference. For a center finder, what's important is that you have a 90 degree angle there 
in a 45 degree angle from there to there. So that's what's critical on this. But on some parts, when you want to scale the same kind of part, like say you've got a part that has a quarter 20 tapped hole in it. Well, you can't scale, if you scale that whole part, you're scaling that tapped hole as well. So you will change that so that you can't always do the scale. Um, if you want the same size hole and you want it in the same distance from the edge and things like that. And I'll do some parts where I, I talk about, uh, how you can do things like that later and keep the, uh, the same constraints with the holes. That'll be, uh, in an upcoming tutorial. Okay, so I guess that's going to do it for this one. If you've enjoyed this video and got something out of it, please leave me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already and don't want to miss any of these tutorials, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and also click that little bell so you get notifications every time I uh, upload a new one. And until the next one, thank you very much for watching.